Welcome back to Falcons franchise. We're four and two, coming off a 34-20 victory over the Buffalo Bills. It was a close game, even though Josh Allen was just launching interceptions. We have an interdivisional matchup today in week seven. We'll take on the one and five Buccaneers. Panthers also really struggling in the division. But it's Thursday night football. It's a short week. So for us, that might make things a little bit more difficult. So they're a decent overall team as well. We can't just totally discount them because they are one in five. This is a team that who knows what could happen. So as you know, short week, these quick turnarounds are always, he said some other stuff in there. I don't know. Uh, and Jake Matthews responds with, of course, and that goes both ways. What goes both ways? I'm not sure. I didn't get to read it. I was too busy yapping. But um, hey, you know what? Long and short is uh, it's short week and we got to score four offensive touchdowns. I missed a lot of that conversation clearly, but the Bucks are also cold, they, and you'd think that's ironic because uh, they play in Tampa, which usually doesn't get too cold. But you know what? Gene Dangus, classic smug response. You know what? Trap game? The Bucks are shit. Based on the record and what they put on film over the past few weeks, I haven't seen much for us to be worried about whether we have our eyes on next week or not, which we do. And the Buccaneers are all struggling. Players will have minus five five to break tackle play rec and tackle that if that's going to be what i think it is we're going to steamroll the buccaneers because we struggle to make tackles now that hopefully is not even going to be an issue and they have worse tackling so we're going to break more tackles they have worse play rec we're going to defend the short pass of brett starkey okay and hopefully our players stay healthy this week. We were without Johnny Hamilton a week ago. We get him back, thankfully. Offense and defense are entirely healthy. So great news as we've kind of been banged up a little bit in recent weeks. We'll check out our injury report as well as the Bucks real quick. As you can see, John Fitzpatrick still recovering from a broken hand. And Riley Wheeler is about to come back from a pulled groin. The Bucks, on the other hand, are looking pretty healthy. Just Frank Bowers of the PCL Sprain will miss today's game. Thank you to Pristine Auction for sponsoring today's video. And if you don't know about PristineAuction.com, they are the most trusted sports memorabilia and collectibles auction site. Auctions on PristineAuction.com start at just $1, and each and every day, there are over 1,000 autograph items available, so you win signed, authentic signatures at affordable prices. And deals are always happening on PristineAuction.com. They have just about each and every player you could even think of or want, including Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, and so many more. And every item on PristineAuction.com comes with a certificate of authenticity from the industry's most reputable authenticators. That's Beckett, PSA, Fanatics, and more. It's in their branding, always authentic. And when you head over to PristineAuction.com, you can find a wide variety of the best auctions on the internet, whether that's upgrading your memorabilia collection on, oh, I don't know, the best romance in world history. I know I'm not tired of hearing about Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. That's awesome. But you can get your fill of weekly auctions, even a Tyreek Hill VIP experience for two guests at the upcoming ball game against Tennessee. So whether you're interested in cool stuff like that or memorabilia from sports and pop culture, head over to pristineauction.com. Use registration code BANGLE for $10 off your first purchase. Registration code BANGLE over at pristineauction.com. And thank you to Pristine Auction for sponsoring this video. Ooh, we do have some upgrades, though. The Carrington brothers, Jason at corner and Jose at linebacker. Jason Carrington, I think slot is the perfect upgrade for him. Now, he's not really a slot corner. He's six foot four, right? But slot really upgrades man coverage a lot, and then you also get tackling on occasion. This time, we get plus two to acceleration, plus two to tackling, and plus, uh, plus one to press. Not so bad. I'm okay with that. Acceleration goes up to a 95. That's really good. And then for Jose Carrington, it's all about run stopper. His coverage is already pretty good, but getting block shed and tackling up is going to bring his game to the next level for sure. So plus two to block shed, not too bad. Play rec and pursuit also go up by one. The rest of these upgrades don't really matter except for the fact that George Johnston is an undrafted rookie free agent with superstar development. Remember the offseason episode at the end, we found him in free agency with superstar dev. Now, he does stink. He's definitely really bad. So I, I guess we'll lean into zone probably. Just because that's his, his highest chance at doing anything. 
He's never going to evolve into being an in-the-box player. He's 6'2", 197, with awful block shed, hit power, tackling. None of those things are ever really going to get too much better. But zone coverage, getting that into the 80s, might make him a viable option as a third or fourth safety, depending on what looks we're coming out in. I would say maybe he would be our, at best, sixth DB. Maybe he sees a field when we're in, like, prevent or something, or, or quarters. But uh, typically... We are not going to want to have him on the field. Trade deadline approaches. Jake Matthews, I'm still considering moving. But outside of that, I think we're going to hold on to Jesse Bates. I think it's the right move. He's playing better with Javon Holland. Now we have to go into Tampa on Dale Mabry here, Raymond James Stadium, and take on the Tampa Bay Bucks. And here we go. We are underway at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. They're actually going to return this kick as well. And Caden Ellis is there to make the tackle. And they don't get back to where they would have had with a touchback. And we're going to see Stanky take the field. Uh, Starkey, of course, new quarterback for the Tampa Bay Bucks. He's really struggled as a young quarterback. Eight touchdowns to nine interceptions. Maybe he's going to be on his game. Maybe he's a primetime player tonight. But I'm hoping not, obviously. We have uh, Johnny Hamilton back in the lineup. Really excited about that. And uh, we're hopefully going to... Make this young quarterback's life hell. But he's going to take advantage of man coverage and find Kirkpatrick for a gain of 15, 13. And Kirkpatrick is somebody we might have to watch out for a little bit today. Superstar development tight end. Starkey, of course, going into his second year playing over Jacoby Brissett and Matthew Stafford. Running back still Rashad White, but they brought in A.J. Dillon. Kari Blassen game at fullback. The receivers are still pretty good. Not a ton in the way of speed. They brought in Elijah Moore to be that slot option. Russell Gage, of course, healthy. But second-year player Dalton Pryor, I think they're expecting to be that next Chris Godwin type player. We'll see if he gets on the field very much, if at all. But Greg Kirkpatrick, the rookie tight end, doesn't have great speed. Really more of a blocking guy. But still could cause us problems, especially if they're going to pound the rock. Are they going to run the ball here? It's right up the middle. Carrington was just kind of caught up in the wash there, and Rashad White's going to break a tackle and get the first down. We were kind of in a weird spot there. I need to realign my cornerbacks, because we had A.J. Terrell lined up with the blocking tight end, which is obviously not what we want. We're going to try it by speed. That's going to mainly have A.J. Terrell and Chris Godwin. Could be Mike Evans sometimes as well. And there's a wide open hole. Rashad White going to get by the diving attempt of Javon Holland. It's another big play for the Tampa offense. Just dove a little bit too early there, kind of expecting that cutback from Rashad White. Didn't end up happening. But that wasn't the big problem, as you see Kirkpatrick holding a great block on Deshaun Humphreys. The problem is that there was so much space. He got to the second level basically instantly, and then... After that, it was just, can a DB come up and make a play? And the answer, of course, ended up being no. And uh, they got a huge gain out of it. So Bucks are driving easily right now until a shot to the end zone is nearly intercepted by Jeff Okuda. Starkey very lucky not to turn over the football in that spot. And they're going more man coverage. But, of course, they have uh, some benefits here. Or, excuse me, more gun empty. But we're going man coverage. And Holland can't make the tackle on Rashad White. He's still going. We came out in man coverage to defend that. We're going to do the same, obviously, here. We're going to run commit up the middle. We need Caden Ellis to make a stop. Dylan Stanley into the game as well, bringing in those bigger linebackers. And that's why you do it. Dylan Stanley, rookie linebacker out of Stanford, comes up and makes the big play. But that is not good. We talked last week about the lack of depth on the interior of that defensive line. Kyber Yankee, one of our best players. He was our first pick in this franchise series, you know, a season ago, had a great rookie season, and that didn't look good. He was limping off pretty slow, gingerly, and you just hope he can come back and be healthy, because that would be a huge loss for the rest of the season. We're just getting another defensive tackle back in Johnny Hamilton, but now it looks like we've lost our best one in Kyrie Yankee. Trey Lance will take the field. He struggled as well this season. You know, I was really hoping he would take a big step up but passing the ball has not been as easy as running the football has been. And we really haven't been able to get Trey Lance in space as a runner until recently. And it's a big injury for Kyrie Yankee. It's a dislocated knee. That's going to be an injury that causes him to miss significant time. 
Now, I'm not sure that it's going to be three or four weeks. Uh, it could be more, could be less, but something in that month type range I would expect, and maybe even up to two months. So that's a big time injury, and hopefully we're, we're able to bounce back and replace him, but it's not going to be easy. It's a really, really good player that we're going to have to replace. Definitely extremely difficult task. Neil Madsen had a great game last week. Four catches for 140 yards and two touchdowns. I said that we wanted to make him a bigger p a piece of this offense, and it looks like that's what we're doing. He's actually starting here over Kyle Pitts, who's going to be playing in that slot role. But look at Madsen. The speed is incredible, and he's able to get it up to about midfield. We need to get him the football more. The speed is just too tough to defend with that size. Kyle Pitts in the game actually out wide. However, he's going to motion into the slot here. Madsen in line. See what we want to do here. Fake the play action. Madsen's wide open, but that distance got closed very quickly. However, the first three offensive plays of this game for us are all three passes and all to the tight end, Neil Madsen. And it's working up to this point. Sets up a second and five here from the 41-yard line. Bijan going to get a touch and make a really nice move to get into the open field and bring things down to the 30-yard line. So we're going to enter the green zone here. And, uh, of course, look to get into the end zone. Three points would be fine to tie it up, but obviously we have bigger aspirations as we would preferably score a touchdown in this spot. We'll see if uh, we're going to be able to do that. As Bijan making everybody miss, and it's another gain of more than 10. Bijan carrying our offense so far. This is a great drive to start. Bijan going to catch a bit of a breather. We might go play action. And hopefully Drake London as well as Quentin Drummond make that safety, make a decision. Kyle Pitts on a block and release could be awesome. I like the idea of this play. And Drake London with a little bit of space can't get it out in front of him. I think there was enough space there with a better throw. I think that's probably a touchdown. Second and 10, Bucks vacating the middle of the field. We're going to look to run. Bijan with a broken tackle. And we take second and long to third and inches in a hurry. All via the explosive Bijan Robinson. He actually goes into the zone as a result of that. They're going to call it a 10 yard run. But he's got the freight train ability. Wouldn't want to get in front of Bijan in this spot, but they stand him up on the goal line. How are they doing that? He's got freight train. Shouldn't he just go right through those tackles? First and goal on the one. Tyler Algier into the game to vulture this touchdown away. I think he might try to hit him off play action. See if we can catch him napping here. And that's exactly what we do. Find Kyle Pitts over the middle in a favorable matchup. Joe Tryon showing it in coverage. The edge rusher, not a good matchup for the Bucks. Trey Lance is able to find Kyle Pitts, and we're able to find the end zone for the touchdown. Gotta love it. Kyle Pitts, still going to be a big part of this offense, even with Neil Madsen getting involved. But uh, that's just really good matchup for us. Actually, it was Chamberlain in coverage. Tryon showing rotated over late. But uh, still a great play. And I missed the extra point with Young Waku. Oh, man, we can't have nice things. It looks so good. And then I just expected the meter to be faster. And it was not. So at least I can nail perfect kick timing on the kickoff. Wow. What a skill. Throw over the middle. Wide open. You got to be kidding me. It's just too easy for the Bucks' offense right now. We were able to keep him out of the end zone with a great tackle from Dylan Stanley. But they're moving the football down the field with far too much ease. That was Elijah Moore for a huge gain. They're already into Falcons territory here. And they're showing no signs of slowing down whatsoever. Start of the second quarter. They're going to play action. Trying to find somebody to cover with Deshaun Humphreys. Quarterback's going to take off. We're going after him. And Starkey hitting the stanky leg. Shooting down to the 23-yard line. Our coverage was decent down the field, but of course nobody really accounted for that quarterback. And the Bucks continue to drive. We definitely need to get better here on defense. I mean, Jose Carrington's right there and it just doesn't matter. Kirkpatrick's able to make that catch. Beautiful throw from Starkey. And again, the Bucks are keeping the foot on the gas pedal here early. I know only three points, but they're just driving so easily. But you know what? I challenge them to try to run the football again. See what happens. We just got to fit the run correctly here. Run up the middle. And I said we wouldn't have to worry about the fullback. And of course, Kari Blasengain finds the end zone. Unbelievable. Bucks 
going to make it a 10 to 6 game. If we score a touchdown, we're going to end up going for two probably. I don't want to make it 13 to 10. I know it's still a field goal game in that instance, but I want to uh, want to make it back to a four point game if we're able to score a touchdown. I prefer to uh, erase that missed extra point. I don't want that to come back and bite us. Although if we miss the two point conversion, it might do a whole lot more than come back to bite us. It might actively be hurting us. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Bijan in the zone. They covered him well enough, so we're gonna opt to go to Kyle Pitts instead. And we're continuing to throw the football. But it's, it's high percentage throws, and that is wide open. Neil Madsen, Drummond, you gotta pick up the block. If Quinton Drummond is able to block for even a second there, Madsen is gonna be on a long run to the end zone. Now, was it Shaq Barrett in coverage? No, it surely was not. He was behind him. It was just a DB. I mean, you gotta be able to make that block. And the rookie showing yet again that I can't entirely trust him up to this point. Here's first and 10 from the 47. Bijan kind of juking into a fender there. Safeties are going to walk up. This could be a perfect time for the screen. We just need Bijan to actually get out! Why am I running a screen if he's not going to get out? Why are you blocking? Why are you possibly blocking for that long? Get out to the flats! Oh my god. Well, I mean, we called the perfect play. A screen against the Blitz. It should be ideal. And Bijan, not only does he not really chip, he is searching to find a block. Get out! I, it's unbelievable how stupid some of these plays are. Now it's third and 24. We're gonna need a miracle. I'm gonna dial up another screen. Bijan gonna have to be individually fantastic after being an individual idiot the play before, but it's not his fault. It's the stupid coding in the game to make the running back turn into an actual moron in that spot. And we're gonna have to punt. I gotta retire that play. It goes too wrong too often because the game's bad. Terribly stupid. Although, amazing punt. Best punter on YouTube. I know it already. However, the caveat is that every time we pin them on the one, I allow 99 yard plays. It's pretty incredible how consistently I get dominated at this point, this part of the field. We need to just not have that happen. They're going to pass. Going to the outside. And we force an incompletion. Good coverage. Second and 10. To run up the middle. There's some space. The third and three. They're already out to the nine yard line. We're just going to go with the zone defense here. Is this even the correct play call? I'm not entirely sure. That is a first down. All right. We got a long way to go, though. Keep him off the scoreboard here. We're going to be in control. And that, I mean, it's just, that can't be completed when I'm right there in coverage. It, it just can't be. My linebackers are simply incapable of jumping. They have, you know, bricks in their pockets. Unbelievable. Make a play. Deion Dobbins, the rookie defensive end, dropping into coverage. And the ball was thrown right to him. And he drops the interception. We saw him make plays in coverage at LSU. You go back to that offseason episode, watch the highlights. He does make a play in coverage. Unbelievably so. Makes a play in coverage there, just doesn't end up securing the takeaway, which... I mean, could end up being the difference between a win and a loss. That'll take us to the two-minute warning. Bucks still in control. They're driving. This is a big third down. And the problem with the momentum factor is I don't know exactly what the play call is, but it doesn't matter when Jose Carrington's able to read that as well as he does shoot into the backfield, make the tackle for a loss on Rashad White, and we will force a punt. Definitely could have called a timeout there. We're going to save him for when we're on offense. We'll see if we can actually get some type of drive going. We don't want to go three and out and then give Tampa Bay uh, the football back. So, all right. Ball on the 38-yard line. Let's see what we can do. And we really got to remember the play as we call it because there's going to be confusion on the field consistently. But maybe just getting the ball in the hands of that guy is what we want to do here. Can't really run the ball consistently here as... You know, we want to try and find a way to get out of bounds, not keep that clock rolling, even with a couple of timeouts here. 
So screens could be a good idea. Bijan's not able to get out into the flat because he's caught on a defender. It'll be third and two. So this is a spot when you can run the ball. I don't know that we will, though. They have a lot in the box here. I'd prefer to just throw, I think. And maybe we find Bijan Robinson. We'll call our first timeout. Play action. We're going to get sacked here. I'm trying to throw it away. 30 seconds to go. Pressure again. It, it falls apart. Third and 24. They read the play action boot easily. We're going to check down to Madsen. Timeout called by Tampa. We're going to punt it back to them. It's frustrating per usual. Uh, really struggling on this drive. To do really much of anything. Last couple, in fact. And I want to get back to running the football. Just in that spot, I feel like. Based on the clock, I didn't really feel super comfortable running the football, taking time off the clock. I wanted a touchdown, and instead, we end up with zero. But that is the first half, and the rain kind of corresponds to our emotions here. It's been a sad first half. We've been bad. But you know what? We get the football to start this third quarter. This is where we can make something happen. Keep the ball on the ground to Bijan. It's been really effective for us when we've been able to do that. And the short passing has worked as well. It's when we try to get the ball down the field that we're really experiencing some trouble. All right, it is third and eight. We are having some troubles here. We really are. And with the momentum, I hate that the offensive play art can be incorrect. It really confuses things at the snap. And I know Bijan was open. I like Kyle Pitts just a bit more in that spot. It's a shorter throw for Trey Lance. It's a better receiver, really. So that was just playing it a little bit more conservatively rather than throwing the ball you know, down the field. I get that there were more yards to be had. On first down or second down, I totally would have done it. On third down, I just needed a guarantee that we were going to pick up that first. Bijan to the outside. Make somebody miss, Bijan. I mean, that'll do. That'll do. Still dominating on the ground. This is going to be a big half of running the football. But... It becomes a little bit more difficult when Bijan's like a carrier or two and then out of the game. We have to hand the ball off to Algier. Doesn't always run as well, but sometimes runs even better. Tyler Algier, 26 yards on his first touch of the game. Bucks are really struggling to defend the run. Bijan looking for space. He might be out of the zone now. They might count that as a tackle for loss. And they do. All right. Not really getting much momentum back for a good drive here. We get it to Madsen. Ray Lance missed him. Third and ten. It's not a halfback draw. It's levels on the right. Corner on or so corner on the right, levels on the left, of course. Throw to Drake London. Not able to catch it. We're gonna settle for three. Oh, that's that's tough. It's a tough drive. It looked really good at some times. We gotta really focus up on this field goal here. All right, drilled it. Going to be 10-9 Tampa. Quite a game so far. Under pressure and down goes the quarterback. Zach Harrison ends up being the one who gets to him. Not one of the usual suspects, but we're certainly happy for it. Second and 16, we can pass commit in this spot. You know, it's, it's not tied, but it may as well be. Throw over the middle and incomplete. Good coverage on the back end. That's the rookie, Jason Carrington. It'll be third and 16. We're going to go man coverage. We're going to pass commit. We're going to contain. We've had a problem defending the quarterback run today. Need to get some depth here. Force a throw. And it's going to be a broken sack. we got to send somebody after him. And it's going to force a throw away. Starkey could have taken some yards there very easily. Ends up with a bizarre throwaway on third and long. Typically, you just want to either get as many yards as you can on the ground or throw it up, arm punt the football. But the throwaway is kind of a young rookie mistake. All right, we finally actually know what play we're running whenever we want to check it out. It's a beautiful thing. Keep blocking for us. Because we're running the ball so effectively most of the time. It's just when we only get one or two yards on first down. And then that sets up second and eight. We got to wonder, all right, do we continue to run the football or do we mix it up? I'm going to try an RPO bubble screen here. If Antoine Winfield Jr. gets any type of depth, we're going to throw it underneath. And that's exactly what he does. We're going to find Quentin Drum and the rookie receiver from LSU and run after catch 
and speed is really the name of his game. We need to find ways to get him the football more. That was a really, really nice result for us. Here's first and 10 from about midfield. Should have a big play, but Bijan is wrapped up from behind. How is he not able to accelerate through that hole? Working off play action. Somebody's going to be wide open. Quentin Drummond clears out some space, leaves Kyle Pitts wide open, and thankfully we're able to connect there. That was looking a little bit dangerous. Let's just go short side of the field here, even away from our blockers, and we'll just try to get that first down. That'll work. Second touch for Algier goes for significantly fewer yards, but same result. First down, it's what we needed, it's what we got. This might be the last play of the third quarter. Let's go straight up the gut here, Bijan. Making guys miss, and Pishon Robinson dancing down to the two-yard line as he goes to the century mark. 100 yards to end the third quarter. Second and one, a little crack toss. Oh, we did not find a good lane at all, and we basically tried to run backwards. What am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing, dude? Do I want to lose the game? Just take the short loss of yards. Don't add to it. Third and 11. I don't really like any of these options. Kyle Pitts, maybe if we can get a one-on-one. -on -one. And we kind of do. Nobody covers him and we missed him. Pitts was wide open in the end zone. They ran some type of zone coverage. Cover three. And Antoine Winfield Jr. just was basically playing a hook. So he was going to come down and cover Quentin Drummond. We're going to take the lead here with the field goal, hopefully. That is a massive miss in the end zone. You can't have those. Cannot have those. And that just sneaks in. All right, we have a bit of momentum now. Home team offensive play art can be incorrect. Now, I don't know if that affects the CPU. Clearly not. They're having no trouble moving the ball. Elijah Moore with another big catch. Starkey gonna run. Oh my goodness, dude. How is he so fast? Oh, it's a screen. Starkey unable to connect with Mike Evans there. And that actually puts AJ Terrell in the zone. Take advantage of this. Throw over the middle. Jeff Okuda cannot defend Kirkpatrick. Nobody seems to be able to. He's three catches for 50 yards. He's a blocking tight end with 70 speed. Looks like prime Rob Gronkowski. It's absurd. And we were undisciplined in our run fits there. I overcommitted with Dylan Stanley, gave him a cutback lane, and Rashad White took full advantage of it, getting five yards. Second and five here, 5.55 to go on the clock. It's another run, another over pursuit, and another first down for Rashad White. Going to the end zone, Javon Holland in coverage! Nearly intercepted, he can't reel it in. Jason Carrington also in there on the pass breakup. Second and 10. I think we can pretty much pass commit in this spot too. If they run the ball, it'd be psychotic. And they're gonna run the ball, but with the quarterback, big hit from Holland. It's just shaken off by Starkey. Who is this guy? Second and goal. Let's creep up a little bit here. Fullback into the game. We'll be worried about that fullback dive. It's gonna be a pitch to the outside. Jason Carrington, beautiful one-on-one -on -one solo tackle in the open field and Rashad White. Would have been a touchdown if not for that tackle third and goal now again we can pass commit here the question just becomes you know are we going to be able to defend the quarterback run if he takes off but Kirkpatrick catches me Jesse Bates flat-footed goes to the outside easy touchdown Bucks retake the lead that was way too easy of a drive I mean this quarterback looks like prime Tom Brady right now with the running ability of Lamar Jackson it's absurd four minutes to go I mean the world is our oyster here Got to keep the ball on the ground with Bijan Robinson inch back to 100 yards on the ground. We're very close. And we'll just take time off the clock. We need a touchdown. Field goal is not good enough. So we got to be mindful of that. But you know, we're in a good spot. Got to not make any mistakes. Ray Lance could scramble here. It's exactly what we're going to do. Ray Lance gained a seven. Stops the clock at 241. With a duo run here. Beautiful from Algier. There is a flag, though. I'm worried this one's coming back. Holding. Will Hart. Rookie center. Playing without any heart. 
Can't make mistakes in this spot. Second and nine. I mean, he looks like a looks like a youth football center. He looks about five foot ten, maybe 110 pounds. How did I draft this guy? Bijan running the wrong way. We'll take the throw away, I guess. Oh, Jesus. Third and nine. I'm not sure if you would call this four down territory. We have three timeouts. I think it kind of depends on how close we can get, right? Couldn't buy enough time. Now, the computer thinks we should go for it. I do agree it's tough to, you know, give up the football here and trust our defense, which has struggled at times. Uh, our offense has struggled, too. The problem is they're in field goal range if we give them the football. It still would be a one-possession game. But we have four stoppages to the clock. We have three timeouts and the two-minute warning. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to end up punting the ball here. And yeah, taking the delay a game is fine. I don't love giving them the football back, but I just think it's the best move for us uh, in you know regard to potentially winning this game. So we're gambling with our defense, but you know I'm hoping obviously it's going to be a gamble that pays off. Uh this I mean we struggled today, no doubt. But I still like our chances on our first time out. Second nine, they're actually going to throw the football. And good enough defense from Jeff Okuda. Third and nine. This is a really big play. Got to stop the Bucks. Throw over the middle. Too much space for Elijah Moore. Oh, this is disgusting. We're going to call a timeout. Rashad White broken tackle. Two minute warning. That's basically the game. Got to run commit. Got to force the ball out. Or we got to let him into the end zone. Tampa takes going to be a 24 to what? What do we have? 12? 24 to 12 point lead. We need an instant touchdown. And then we need an onside kick. Our offense, man. just We really struggled outside of just running the ball with Bijan today. And we were consistently finding ourselves in a spot where we couldn't just run the ball. As much as I would have liked to, we couldn't do it. And our offensive performance was just disastrous. Yeah, those safeties are shaded so far to the outside here. I really don't know where we're going to be able to go with the football. Especially if we keep dropping passes. Rolling out with Lance. We have plenty of space. He's going to pick up plenty of yards here. First and ten. Bijan, oh my god, what a throw from Trey Lance! Bijan with space! Stiff arming down the sideline out at the six. What a throw from Lance. I've been waiting for that. You know, something truly amazing, and that was. No way. Tyler Algier receiving touchdown. Obviously, we're going to need a bit of a miracle here with an onside kick, but... You know what? It's it's within the realm of possibility, I guess. Onside kicks can happen. And hopefully we get lucky. All right, here we go. Onside to try to stay in this game. Here it is. And the ball's loose! Somebody dive on it! It's recovered by the Falcons! We got the onside! We need to take another look at this. Young Wei Koo, more than making up for his missed extra point, with a beautiful onside kick, getting a ton of height on that. And it's going to be Arnold Ebikady that collides with Elijah Moore, who's had a big game today, but can't catch this one. Football hits the ground, and then it's a mad dash for the football. I mean, Caden Ellis is thrown down. You have Kari Blasengame, who scored a touchdown in this game, trying to dive on it, but can't. Offensive lineman right over it. And in comes Javon Holland to dive at the football, and he recovered it. No, he didn't. He didn't. Caden Ellis? Caden Ellis used the magic of witchcraft to get the ball sucked into his body out of nowhere. I mean, he just shot into his hands. No, it, it didn't, because he doesn't have it either. Who has the ball? It is Javon Holland. Oh my, I don't even know what's happening. 
I mean, it looked like it's in the arms of Caden Ellis. Is it not? I can't even get a good angle at this. No, I guess Javon Holland got his right hand on it somehow. It shot right into his right hand. Well, either way, we've got the football back. Javon Holland was a big signing for us and now could help us win this game and avoid being upset here on Thursday night. A minute and 19 to go. We need a touchdown, of course. We're gonna roll out. We're gonna hit the rookie, Quinton Drummond! And he catches it! What a throw from Lance on the run. We're getting chaotic. But it's working. 50 seconds. I'd like to stop the clock here in the really near future. Gonna go up to Neil Madsen. And he catches it! Neil Madsen! Our offense is making the tough catches. Trey Lance making the tough throws. 30 seconds on the clock. Snap the football. I'd love to stop the clock at some point in the near future. We're rolling out. Lance on the run. Diving to the end zone. Is he's in! Trey Lance with the touchdown! What a drive. What a sequence. And what a win. If we can pull it off. We're going to go for the two-point conversion here, of course. What a drive. We had, we had a lot of things going our way there, but what a drive. Oh my goodness. Two-point conversion to make it a field goal game. Can't lose on a field goal. Slant to London. Got it. 27-24. And now, if Tampa wants to win in regulation, they need a touchdown. Of course, if they want to tie, they've got three timeouts in 22 seconds. It's plenty of time. Although, if you watch the Eagles-Seahawks game, you'd say, oh, it's impossible. What a botch job from the Eagles. It that was terrible. But we're in a position where we can win this game. Ideally, we stop them from getting in field goal range, obviously. But it's okay if they do. We can't get beat over the top. That's the number one thing right now. Keep them in front of you. That's fine. And make them burn timeouts. Totally fine. Second and two. We're going to go pass commit. We're going to contain the quarterback. We're going to show pressure here from Humphreys. And then we're going to, of course, drop out of it. Throw over the middle. Great defense. And it's a drop. I actually would have preferred if he caught that. They would have had to burn a timeout. Could end up mattering. But there's only 13 seconds here. So, you know, maybe not. Maybe not. And we're actually going to force this football out incredibly quickly. Devon Holland back up. Throw over the middle. Caught by Mike Evans. Final timeout. Used by Tampa. They do, get, they do get the first down, right? But there's 10 seconds to play. The blitz worked really well in that spot. Here's first and 10. Again, keep them in front of you. That's not what we're doing there a little bit. Things got a little bit dangerous. Back up. Back up, defense. Back up. Do not get beat from press. Starkey buying time. Launching it. And incomplete. Triple zeros on the clock. It's a miraculous comeback from the Falcons to win 27-24. I mean, that's one of the craziest wins in any of my franchise series history. I mean, that's a wild win. We didn't look good at times, but you know what? Our best drive of the game was our last drive of the game. And we had to have it. And we did. That was an insane one. Trey Lance numbers end up looking pretty good after that. That was a huge final drive. Some big throws and great catches really as well, right? And uh, of course, some big runs. Bijan does end up going over 100, if only barely. No runs of 20 plus, but consistently was over 10 it felt like. Even though his long was 14. Averaged 6 yards per carry. Brett Starkey was annoying. Ray Lance, 3 for 38 in the game-winning touchdown. That was a crazy finish. Crazy finish. Really fun one in the end. Neil Madsen goes 6 for 79. Elijah Moore was a problem. Kirkpatrick was a problem. Touchdowns for Algier. Kyle Pitts. And, of course, we allowed one to Greg Kirkpatrick. But, man, what a win. Feels good. Two catches for 39 yards for the rookie, Quinton Drummond. And then defensively, Big TFLs when we needed them, too, for Jose Carrington. A sack for Zach Harrison. No picks in the end, but some great defense was played. I oh, I can't believe we won this game. Great for Will Hart. 6'1", 314. Looks like, again, like 5'6 on the field. It's pretty insane. Quentin Drummond also has a boost. Medium route running is so bad. 
and that's a pretty important part of uh, playing in the position. We're going to upgrade slot. He could end up being a slot option for us, even if he's right now a big deep threat. One to medium route running, plus three to short. I'll take that. Really not mad about that at all. And then Drake London. He's been a lot better of late. I'd like spectacular catch to go into the 90s. I'd love a speed boost into the 90s as well. But I think naturally deep threat makes the most sense for everything that I'd like to get upgraded. And you get a nice little boost in there. Nothing too crazy. And Jake Matthews, I think that's a perfect explanation. Things didn't exactly go according to plan offensively, but we still got the job done, and that's what matters. A win is a win. Got 1,000 XP for the entire team. Yeah, we couldn't go in and just stomp them the way we maybe would have wanted to, but we got the W. And at the end of the day, that's what matters, unless it's college football, in which case, it's maybe more of an opinionated thing. But yeah, winning in the NFL is not easy. So when you can get wins, any way you can get a win, you're happy about it. This week, next episode, is going to be the trade deadline. And unfortunately, we do have a position of need to potentially fill for the next month. Kyrie Yankee going to miss the next four games due to injury with a dislocated knee. So we might need to go find a replacement. And we'll see what happens with Jake Matthews as well. There could be some shifting in Atlanta. See you in the next one. Take it easy.